Hi everyone, welcome back. So I thought I'd start another game uh, with the, the uh, computer where I would have uh, a different setting. Like the first game we played was uh, at level 8, which was the beginner's level. This is skill level 1 where it takes about 15 seconds uh, to move. Uh, so let's go ahead and... So we're going to start off with, you know, one of my favorite openings. Um, you know, the English opening. So we'll start off with C4. Oops. Oh, there we go. Alright, then it's going to fight in the center. It's going to play E4. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and move my G3 P. Um, G-pawn up, so I could put the, the bishop in there. Okay, now I'm going to move my bishop. I could reinforce that square. Okay. Then it wants to... Now I'm going to go ahead and... I don't want that pawn moving any further. So I'm going to play e4. Make sure that pawn doesn't come up any further. He reinforces his pawn. And I'm going to move my other knight to c3. So I could reinforce uh, that pawn over there on e4. Now I got both my uh, uh, bishop and um, my knight covering it. It's getting ready to castle. I'm going to play knight e2. Let's see what he does. All right, so he wants to pressure it right away. Hmm. Right, so I'm going to block it. Force him to have to go somewhere else. Okay, he's putting pressure on the C pawn, so I'm going to have to play D3. So that's covered. He castled. And let's see, wait. Hmm. Should I jump into D4 or D5 or castle or. I think I'm going to castle first. And he jumps his knight into d4. I don't want him. I just don't want him staying in there. I'm gonna get rid of him. And then I'm gonna jump my knight. Okay, so he takes with the pawn. And now I want my knight into d5. Oops. see what he does. All right. uh, he moved his rook over. Hmm. So I have to develop the bishop. But I wonder if I should push the pawn and then push it one more just to kind of tell him, hey, make up your mind. 
Okay, so I'm going to move the f4 pawn with the intent of moving it one more to trap his bishop if he's not careful. Right, he's moving the knight out of the way. Okay, let's go ahead and get rid of his bishop. Because now that bishop of his is running out of squares. Yep. So we'll play f5. And now he's really running out of squares. He's ran out of squares. Right, so wait, moves his knight over. Right, so I'm going to just get rid of his bishop. Because our pawn is covered by the queen. He retakes it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's say, move away, Mr. Knight. He's getting it out of the way. Ooh. But now they're on a diagonal they're on a diagonal with that bishop. Okay, he gets he gets it out of the way of the bishop's diagonal. Let me see, I still like to, let me see, if I, if I move the bishop over, the other one, um, let me see, then he could bring him down, but that doesn't make sense, because it would be another secure. Alright, so I'm thinking, let's get the other bishop involved, because the bishop right now isn't developed. Now I got some nice diagonals on him. Let me see, now he moves his knight in. Not sure why he did that. I mean it's still the d3 pawn is still covered. Hmm. So I don't have to worry about the d3 pawn. Maybe gain some more space on the queen side, maybe? Hmm. Got some kind of weird tactic where pawn takes and no. Nah. All right, so let's let's give him some more space on that queen side. So we'll move the pawn up. Oh. Now the now the question is, do I capture Ampasan or not? Because here's the thing, Ampasan is. Um, my pawn was on the fifth uh, row, and he jumped two squares. So what I could do is, it's called capture in passing, where uh, I pretend as though he had only gone one square. But in order for me to do that, I, have to, I would have to do that now. Oh, that if I try to do it later, it's against the rules. Um, and I don't think Ampasan helps me. It actually probably helps him more. So I don't think I'm going to do it. Instead, I think I'm just going to capture this pawn here and it's capturing with the queen All right so let me see so now what can I attack here hmm let me see I want to trade bishop for knight because it's not it's not forced. And the rook can well the rook could be better on an open file. So I'm thinking maybe maybe move the rook over 
um, the rooked A to the C file. Alright, let me try that. Oops. Lost a pawn. I'm still, I think I'm still ahead, but not as much. All right, let's let's get rid of that knight now. And then this rook recovers it, but now we get a pawn back. Come on. Oh. Right, so since so, so I'm ahead, like I, like I said in my other video, when you're ahead, trades are good for you because they give you, um, they build on your strength and less likely to make a mistake. So trading would be good for me for right now. So I'm going to probably take with the queen again. Yeah. Okay, so now let's see. Hmm. I don't have to worry about protecting d3 anymore because nobody's attacking it. My rook is attacking his f7 pawn. Um, well, I could move the queen over and take the f7 pawn again twice and, and go after that loose pawn that's on the b file. So it's a double threat. Attacks both the f7 pawn, uh, the one that's, you know, and then it's also guarding, um, going, sorry, uh, going after the other pawn, the, the one on b. Hmm. Let me see, wait. Oh, I just realized there's a tactic in here. And the tactic is this. My rook can take that pawn. If the queen comes over and decides to uh, recapture, it's going to wind up on the same uh, uh, diagonal as the um, king. So what's going to happen is that bishop over there is going to jump in and create a skewer, like well, like a pin, and it's basically kind of bad for it. So essentially, it's like you don't want to you you don't want to um, take that pawn right now. Let's see what it does. Oh, it did. It fell for it. Well, now, now it's going to be in real bad shape. Because now this bishop is going to pin it. So, yeah, this is, this is bad. This is bad for the machine. Because now this, this, um, this is going to be overwhelming. So he has to get out of the way. So, um, don't have an easy way to get to his bank rack because our rook is still at least guarding it. So maybe what I should try to do is um, move that pawn in the middle and kind of work its way towards becoming a queen. Uh, maybe force it to sacrifice its rook to stop it. So let's go ahead and start creating a threat. OK, 
Okay. Now my my king is controlling, you know, if he's trying to come down or something. 